Welcome to the Tomosi Business Training Series. The basis of these sessions is to support the Tomosi Group staff and management to raise their capabilities and performance. The series is also a platform to share our experience with young entrepreneurs making an effort to build their startups in Uganda and across Africa. Today's training session is about national unity and straightening the bonds of East Africa as our regional and African heritage. Good morning, our live audience and those of you who follow regularly our discussions. The series we started called the centeredness or the connectivity of the Great Lakes region against tribalism by understanding our historical context, where we come from as nation states today, and where we are heading into one united Africa that really every African should aspire, look forward to. But let me read to you another interesting one. This is the response of Lugard, Captain Lugard, when he heard that Mwanga is trying to connect with his brother. So he says, um, I am not sorry for this Kabalega. For if I have time, there's nothing I would like better than to turn out that human feared. He's abusing him angrily. With him alone, I don't desire peace. Always he's hostile. He sends to ask for peace when he fears vengeance is coming. This is the man that Mwanga thinks he's friends with. He doesn't know that pretty soon he would turn out against him. That what we confront, we cure. If we find a mistake repeated from the past, we don't hide it. We confront it. I want to let you know that we are not the only ones in this world who have these minute differences, who have these nuances that tend to separate us, yet we look similar. I have looked at the country of Japan lately in my research. Country of Japan, very huge economy. I remember in 2011 when they had a tsunami in the month of March, the economy of Japan lost $240 billion worth. That's the total combined economies of all of East Africa. They lost it in one month. They lost what we run as GDP, but they recovered very quickly. Hard-working people, um, planful people. They had a basis to stand on for that recovery. Uh, by saying that, I'm not saying we're not hard-working. But I just want to show you that even in these economies that are very developed, there are certain differences that people have that you, when you see you're receiving a donation from a developed country, you may not know. So I found four differences among the Japanese. The first one is called keibatsu. Keibatsu means family and matrimonial cliques that these family cliques are always fighting each other for positions in government or in business. The other group is called Kyodabatsu. These are clansmen or people from the same locality. They have them. It's a very developed society, but you can see they have differences internally. The third one, they call it Gakubatsu. Gakubatsu means you strengthen together with your former schoolmates, university classmates, when you get a position in a government department, you look for those you studied with. And then the final one they have is called Zaibatsu. Zaibatsu is based on money, building large businesses. Among the Japanese, because Japan emphasizes strong bureaucracy to develop the economy, among those differences in their bureaucrats, the one they tend to emphasize most is school and university classmates. That if we have, wherever we came from, whatever cliques we have, but that we found ourselves at the university, we have one outlook towards Japan and where we want to push it, and then we need to use that um, gakubatsu 
negative as it is, remember I said a border, borderline, fictitious is negative, but you can use it. So they use that to strengthen the Japanese economy more and to strengthen the bureaucracy which runs the economy and grow their country. In other words, you can take what's supposed to be a mistake and you turn it into something good. So you are not alone. I just want you to know you are not the first, you are not the last, but strengthen those areas that unite us. I want to conclude this way. Foreigners or non-Africans are not the issue. They are not your enemy at all. In fact, your own brother, an African, can be your own enemy, as we have seen. It's not the color of people. It is the mission. So, if the mission supports three key things, that's your brother. That's your true brother. First, does this person support the vision of the country where you are? The vision of Africa to develop and come out of poverty and strengthen ourselves. That's a brother on a mission. The sec brother or sister. The second one is, does this sister or brother, regardless of country, regardless of tribe, religion or color, do they understand and respect your values? Because we have customs, food, dance. There are things that are important to us as Africans. There is food I value very much. I, I cannot find myself uh, eating with chopsticks, yet I also cannot every day eat with my hands. But I have adopted technology, I use a spoon, or a fork, or a knife. However, I only use those things not to disparage other people's food, or to eat the food I don't like. I use it to eat millet, meal, ovro, or maize. And I cannot say, because I, I cannot eat using chopsticks, there's something wrong with me. No. There's nothing wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with the other person. Simply, we respect each other's differences on how we eat food. And that should be minor, depending on the bigger things, the bigger picture. That's why I said emphasize the bigger picture rather than these small differences. So understand and respect the values of the other party, of the other group regardless of whether you don't, you don't use them or you don't like them. I mean, use those values or like those values. And then the third one is, is your brother or sister, regardless of color or difference, do they aim at a better world where all nationalities are knowledgeable, are prosperous, and can have access to opportunity? That's what should matter to us. I want to thank you and I want to, uh, again, I forgot, I used this session to mention awareness, that you should be aware of those traditional rivalries that have stopped us by looking at people who are not in our position. They were in a far worse position, but they united and they tried to rid the country of things that, countries and region of things that were not good. I used this to demonstrate that it's not the size or the color of country or people, but the mission. I also spoke about the meaning of these fictitious border lines that have been drawn, the fact that we could use them for strength instead of being hemmed in and being simply importers of everything, but we use them to export to the region and beyond. Now, one of these uh, feed, people who sent the feedback um, is a young man uh, called Pidson. And he raised the question of, can you tell us what does Nkeja Nambaguta mean? And I wanted to end with it. Nkeja Nambaguta, for those who come from the greater Ankole, I want to give you context. There were three major collaborators in the history of Uganda, as far as I understand. The first one was Sir Apollo Kagwa, given the title Sir 
Apollo Kagwa would have been killed among the pages of Kabaka Mwanga in 1888. But fortunately, he had been hiding, been as a young man, had traveled to Ankole. He had hidden in Ankole under a king called Ntare V, and he was identified by Alexander Mackay. I don't have time to take you through that. Alexander Mackay is the one who identified him, introduced him to the Church Missionary Society, publicized him. Eventually, when Kabaka Mwanga was exiled and Kavalega, this guy would be the entry point by the British. The second one that I know of is a king called Kasagama. Been a young man, his country, Toro, his kingdom, overthrown by Kavalega in 1869. He came as a young man and lived in Masaka. His mother was called Victoria Kahinju. They were identified by another young man. When I get into this, one thing leads to another. Between Buganda and Bunyoro, there had been people who would live in Buganda in the court uh, in Mengo who knew things about Toro and Bunyoro. There was a fellow called Biakweyamba who was used by Lugard to locate where this prince, Kasagama, was in Masaka. Biakweyamba took Lugard, they identified this Kasagama, and installed him again as the king of Toro. Kasagama would be used as the entry point to now, uh, by the British, conquer almost Busongola, parts of Toro, parts of Bunyoro, another chief collaborator. The third one was Mbaguta, where I come to answer Pidson. Mbaguta had been a young man raised around present Delhi and Tonde area, trained by the Christians running away from uh, religious conflicts here in Buera, Maogola, present day Sembawile uh, district. And he created a force out of the people running away, that force was called Avangonia, that force was used to raid Rwanda, Shema today, Igara. Eventually, when kings were removed in Nkore, Mbaguta would take position and become the entry point. So when you unite the story of Kasagama you, with the story of, um, of uh, Mbaguta and the story of Apollo Kagwa, you get the beginning of the entry point of the British to be able to create this thing they call a protectorate and put borders and govern it as their um, export market. This is where we are receiving shirts, uh, taking out cotton, things like that. Huh? Now, these three people were trained to do things, new things by the colonizers. For example, in Kesha and Bogota, where trees, eucalyptus trees planted on roads in places of administration introduced by the British and the Banyankore never planted trees. So I came with Mbaguta meant that the tree planting project came with Mbaguta. Same as roads, same as water dams, same as all these things. If you go to Mbale, you will see trees called Kakungulu trees. Sme Kakungulu had been also used as a colonizer in that area and there are huge trees over 120 years old in that area. So Nkeja Nambaguta really means the changes that came with those collaborators. I want to thank you and encourage you to watch again. Uh, our next segment will focus on this trade we spoke about as export that we need to use to cross these borders. What should we do as young people to get into the system that enhances our trade and export, strengthens our capacity, regardless of these minute differences that tend to separate us. I thank you. God bless you. We would like to hear from you. Please email us at info at and visit our website at www.tapmedia.com. You can also visit our offices located at Tomosi Business Park, Luzira, Port Bell Road, or call 0414-220-702. Thank you.